Okay, we are looking here at a standard dryer outlet, electrical outlet, and this has three ports on it. And as of January 1st, 1996, you're not allowed to use these anymore on new construction. And it's always a good idea if you get a new dryer, I think, to go ahead and upgrade your outlet um, if it's possible. And I'm going to show you how to do that today, and I'll show you how to do how to determine if it's really possible or not. So this is what the three outlet looks like, and then next to it here is the newer code compliant uh, four outlet. So the three outlet basically has here your X and Y, and then the the, the neutral or the, the system ground they call it, and that's what they had for years. But now uh, and because of what they used to do is they would ground inside the machine here. So here's your dryer over here. They would ground inside of the, the dryer and they don't allow that anymore in new construction. What they want you to do is with this four conductor one, the extra one is the ground, which is this line here. And luckily we have it in this box. So even when this house was built in the late 80s, they, they used a three connector here. but the people who did the wiring actually had a little bit of foresight and um, thankfully they ran the system ground to us and probably did it because this is a metal box. Anytime you have a metal box you always want to bond it. It's called bonding to the system ground. Whatever ground you have coming in here needs to wrap around a screw in the back of that metal box. So the, the metal box is now grounded in case you, so you don't get shocked. Okay, so since they already wired one in here for us. We have a, a system ground. We can then very easily just hook it to this. What if you don't have one? Well, if you don't have a ground in your box, the only way to get one is you've got to have an electrician come in and run a ground from your your fuse panel all the way over here to this box. And that can be a pain. Somebody may have to crawl up into the attic and run wires down the wall. We've had to do that before. And, but it's got to be done if you want to upgrade it. And if you're thinking of remodeling your house and you're you know, doing stuff with the electrical and you're getting it inspected, the city may make you upgrade it to the four wire. Okay, so we're going to show you how to do that right now. Now, of course, we always have to shut off power to the dryer right here in the fuse panel so you can see it's set to the off position. And they're pretty easy to find. It's usually a, a dual switches connected together here. And it'll say 30 on there because most dryers are 30 amps, or the circuit is anyway. Okay, so as we look at this connector here, you can see it's got our X and Y wires, and it has the the common there, and then the ground goes here. And if you flip over to the back, it's usually labeled. You can barely see it. Like there's the Y, there's the X right there with my thumb is okay and the wires just go right in they want you to strip off about a half an inch stick it in there and screw it down and that's pretty much all there is to it and so this is how you can recognize the difference between a dryer outlet and a stove outlet is the dryer has this L-shaped one right here so now we come back out here to our standard uh, dryer power cord, and this is the four wire version here, and we take it out of the bag and you can see there's your, your four prongs sticking out of it, and there's your four colored cables. Okay, now it doesn't matter which direction the red and black go on on here, there's, there's no polarity like there would be like on, a, on, you know, when you're thinking of stuff hooking up to a battery, you know, black and red usually means plus and minus. In this case, it doesn't really mean anything because they're both 120 degrees voltage. They're, they're out of phase, so you end up with 240 volts total, approximately. So these two, you don't have to worry about you know, where they connect you know, um, when you're connecting the wires on the back end over here. Okay. Now you'll notice that my socket here See how it has this kind of a round thing with a plate on it? I went and bought a new cover plate for it here so that this will, once it's connected to the box, this will go on and it'll look nice and brand new, nice and shiny. I like to have my installations look perfect. 
unlike this old thing where it looks like somebody got paint all over it on over the years and it just looks cheap and I wanted to come back here and talk to you about this end because this is what's going to connect into the back of the dryer and you have to remember now that we're using a four conductor um, system now you have to remove there's a little grounding strap inside the back of the dryer which I'll show you how to do in the coming up step here but it's very important to remember that has to get removed because what they're doing is they're getting the ground inside the dryer by basically shorting it to the, the, um, the common and so you need to get rid of that because now you're separating it and the ground will be its own separate thing it will no longer be shorted to the common here this white one okay that's essentially what they're doing inside the dryer they're shorting these two together with a strap that runs between the two and we just have to remove that strap now even though we've cut off the power at the fuse panel I always wear gloves and I always check it with my volt alert here and the way this works is you just put it on any line and if there's power there it'll show you so what I always do is I test it on a known outlet first I push this button on see it blinked so now we know it's on so now we're gonna go check it on a regular outlet well this one doesn't fit into these more modern outlets here to get the power but you can just put it by any cord that's plugged in and you can see see how it's lighting up so you know that it's working right now let's go back out and test it on the dryer. So I'm back here at the dryer outlet and I'm touching it here to all of the wires in here, everything. And I can see, see this one back here lights up? But he's not going to this. He's going off to this other outlet box here which is for the washer. So that's fine, he's okay. All I care about is that right now, for this moment in time, that these guys here are all free of voltage, and they are. So we know we're safe now to play with the wires. So I gotta tell you, I love this tool to death. When I'm working electrical stuff and I'm in my boxes there doing work, I always like to use this insulated screwdriver. You notice how it's not metal? It's only metal at the end there. So this is insulated for a thousand volts. It gives you, you know, some pretty good protection. Just another step of safety here. So we're just going to use this flathead and loosen these three screws here, which will loosen the three wires. Okay, so I've loosened them all and it just comes right off. Now you're gonna, sometimes you'll be presented with another dilemma here, because you can see they got a little crazy with the paint. So, okay, which one's the white wire, which one's the red one? You know, don't get confused and make sure you don't get them mixed up you know because you're going to about to screw these on and you want to make sure they're proper so here I can sort of see a little bit of red on this one so I know that's the red wire this is you know X and Y are the black and red and then the, the ground there or the common one is the white one okay so we've tightened up the last one and when you're done you want to give them all a really good tug and make sure they're in there tight use both hands and just you know, yank on them Make sure they're in there nice and tight because you don't want to have any arcing whatsoever. So here you are, here's your finished four wire connector here, your port. Now we're just gonna uh, put all these wires back in. We're gonna mount the plate here. The plate has two opposite corner screws that we're gonna use here. You see it's gonna go right, you know, right through all there. Okay, so here I've attached the plate onto the outlet ring there okay so now all you got to do is push it in and screw it on but I wanted to point out something to you you notice how I have uh, this one up top here the ground one is up top and there's a reason why I do that I usually prefer to do it that way and the reason for that is because this is your dryer plug and it's gonna hang down like this and so you want you want that part right there, see there's the ground one up top, that's the ground prong. You want him to go right in there so that the cable can just lay perfectly straight down, up and down, okay? Your situation may be different, so you always want to make sure you know exactly what orientation it needs to be in. Okay, so there is our finished product. 
Now, one thing you'll notice that this particular box only had two screw holes. It didn't have any for these two holes here. So what we're going to do is get a little bit of silicone and just fill in these holes here because you don't ever want some little kid to come by with a hanger or, you know, I can think of a million scenarios, all stupid of course, where somebody would come in but you don't ever want to uh, allow any chance for somebody to penetrate this and get into the box with any kind of wire. Okay, so now we're turning our attention to the back of the dryer and typically you'll remove a panel like this off the dryer to expose the, uh, the three wires there. And you remember I mentioned before, if we're going to a four wire design, which we have here, we have to remove this ground strap. This is the most important part right here. Because this is normally how the manufacturers ground your dryer. They just simply connect the chassis to the neutral, the white wire and it goes back to the uh, electrical panel. So here with the four wire, we're supplying the ground wire, so they, you're not allowed to, going forward with four wire connections, you're not allowed to short the ground, to the, the chassis ground to the uh, neutral anymore. So we have to take this off. Okay, so now we're just going to unscrew it here. why I hate flathead screws. I don't know why. Sometimes they give you ground screws that are Phillips head. Sometimes they give you ground screws that are flathead. So you just undo this other screw here and you pop off the ground clip and you throw it out because you don't need it anymore. And what we're going to do later is we're going to relocate this ground screw over to here because when the wire is coming through here the green wire is going to end up right there okay and you can see there's actually a symbol there for the ground is pretty much anywhere anywhere you find a screw hole you can use it so the other thing this is what angers me too about the dryer manufacturers is they don't supply you with these strain reliefs here and this is a UL um, approved three-quarter inch is what you need here do not get the ones that you would use on a outlet box those are the next size down those are three-eighths inch uh, and so this has to go around the, the, the cable goes through it here. So we're going to just put these through here. Same like that. And run it through the hole here. And we're going to see if we can't get the strain relief in here. There we go, we got it in there. And I like to twist it so that the screws are facing outward so that when I'm done, I can just clamp it down. So, we don't really need a whole lot of excess, we just need to get these to where they're going right there. So, the next step is you then take the nut, and let me show you what we're doing there with the nut. We're going to run this nut all the way over to here, and screw it in. And don't worry about the distance of your cable just yet until you screw down the clamp. Because right now we're just trying to screw this on. <clears throat> then we'll just tighten it down more with the screwdriver. So what you do is you put your screwdriver on one of the nubs. Just give it a few bangs. Now it's nice and tight. So now I'm going to adjust the cable to where it belongs there. Make sure these can all reach their destination, and they can. So then you just start tightening down the clamp. So this is your kind of elaborate sort of a strain relief. Okay, good. So now it's nice and solid. So now we're going to take the green one, the green wire, and stick the green brown screw in there. Flathead. Sometimes I'll use a hex driver too. Okay. Okay, so there we have the green wire is now attached. The proper way, according to the 
National Electric Code as of January 1st, 1996. And so now we're going to attach the white wire onto the middle one there. And it even says it on the back, N for neutral. So that's how you know you're correct. So we're just going to put this back in there. So now both our ground and neutral are in. And it doesn't matter which way the red and the black ones go, but they've already got it color coded. So I'm just gonna match what they have there. Very simple. So the red wire is going to go there. And we'll put the screw back in. Only thing left is the black wire. We'll take the screw out. Okay, he's gonna go right on top. And we'll put the screw back in. So now we have all four of our wires in. And before we plug everything back up, we want to do a sanity checker and make sure we did everything right. So we have the three quarter inch strain relief on here. Cable's nice and tight. These are screwed in tight. Green goes there. Red goes to red. Black goes to black. And white goes in the middle where the neutral is. Now, the, it's also very important to put this lid back on because you would hate for some little kid to come running by playing later on and run into this thing and stick his hand back there, and then it's all over. So, you just screw this guy in, and our job is now complete. So we have now successfully converted this house from a three-wire dryer connector to a four-wire connector, and we have wired it successfully to be a four-pronged plug. So we are now fully compliant with the modern electrical code. So thanks for watching our video and we hope you learned a lot today and that you will follow all of the safety steps we showed you. And if you like what you see, please subscribe